I'm, my name is Tony Van Dam, University of Luxembourg, Luxembourg. My story about how I got started in geodesy is probably a lot different than most people's. I was working at the University of Colorado with Jim Wickham and after a year and a half he left and the person that had money to take me on immediately was John War, who um, classic geodesist and um, so I started working in geodesy with John War back in about 1984. I do call myself a geodesist. Um, unlike a lot of people that just use geodesy to get time series and uh, coordinate time series and, and vectors, I worry about things like the reference frame, um, how air sources affect my velocities, time correlated noise, and those are the things that real geodesists have to worry about when you're trying to interpret your data. In the beginning of my research, it was mostly theoretical geodesy that I was working on. I was looking at air sources uh, caused by environmental loading. And at the time, GPS, none of the, none of the space geodetic techniques had the, had the precision to see these things. About, and then about in the, the, the 19, late 80s, I started working with um, satellite altimeter data to look at atmosphere-ocean interactions. And then by the time I graduated, GPS was getting to the, the stage and VLBI were getting to the stage where they could see the signals that I had theoretically modeled at the beginning of my thesis. So over um, about a decade, uh, the, the precisions just increased so, so much. Now or in the past? Uh, let's go with now. Okay. Um, right now, I'm doing all sorts of stuff. I have four postdocs and three PhD students. So I started out by looking at noise characteristics in, in um, geodetic data. And then I moved into um, looking at the cryosphere. I was part of a team to install some of the first GPS receivers in Greenland. So we're looking at ice mass changes and uh, post-glacial rebound in Greenland. That's a project we're doing. We're also looking at inflation, deflation of the Yellowstone caldera, reflectometry for uh, soil moisture and snow depth, um, low degree changes in the uh, shape of the earth, things like that. That's really hard to answer because UNAVCO has been ubiquitous in everything that has happened with, with GPS. Um, I think one of the first things that, that I remember and that really impressed me was the fact that we could see plate velocities from, from GPS. Uh, that was from these tiny systems that you could carry on your back. We could see plate velocities. So that's one of the things that I would say um, has always struck me. The other thing over the years is that uh, um, because of the increase in precision of uh, GPS from uh, in our data analysis techniques and the hardware as well, uh, we have been able to, to, to just decrease the scale and the wavelength of the processes that we look at um, so, so much. So that instead of just looking at one plate moving into another plate, we're looking at these tiny, tiny um, micro plate kind of um, interactions and I think that's been really really important and it couldn't have happened without um, UNAVCO. Um, and then in my work uh, all of the stuff we're learning about Greenland and Antarctica from 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 GPS uh, and that's just at the beginning I think we're going to learn more and more as time goes on so those are the things that I would say that I really really think couldn't have been done without UNAVCO. Again, uh, I'm a professor in Europe, and everybody in Europe uses the technology that's been developed for the academic community in the United States by UNAVCO. Um, one of the most important things is TEQC. Everybody uses it, everybody needs it, and you can do almost anything you want um, except for make a martini with TEQC. Um, 
The other thing that, I th that, that UNAFCO has been really good at is developing the, the, the technology so that we can go anywhere in the world, the remotest places in the world, and have communications and power um, and robust systems that can, can measure uh, continuously. TEQC is a software that um, was, I'm not sure, I think it was written by somebody at, uh, in, in California, but it was taken over and really, really turned into a tool for scientists. Um, what it does is it takes the raw data uh, received by any kind of GPS receiver and turns it into RINEX files at, at a minimum. But it also provides information like uh, signal to noise ratio, um, which is really important, and it tells you signal strength, things like that. So it's, it's just invaluable. I'm on the TEQC mailing list, and people from all over the world use it, and I see questions going back and forth all the time. So it's everywhere. Everyone is using it. Precision, precision, precision. It's, um, we've gone from, from really uh, centimeter, centimeter level verticals to, to sub-centimeter verticals, which means that, and vertical uh, signals is the stuff that I tend to work on the most. So we would have never thought 30 years ago that we could see post-glacial rebound or the effects of sea level rise or, um, yeah, present day melting of the, of the ice sheets. It's, it was just unfeasible before, but now um, because of that increase in precision, advances in hardware and software, uh, we, can, we can do so much more now than we could have done in the past. Well, until someone can come up with a way to measure crustal displacements continuously anywhere on the Earth, um, I think UNAVCO is going to have a, a place um, serving society and um, pushing the boundaries of where we can set up GPS receivers. And we're going to be looking for smaller and smaller signals in the future, and UNAVCO is just going to be a part of that. I hope they continue to be funded to do this. We just, I can't imagine not having a world without UNAVCO. No, this is, it, it's funny, I've been, um, I've seen UNAVCO since its inception, and at the time it seemed, from, from my perspective, I was just a graduate student, but it seemed like this loose little club and that whoever got the TI 4100s at the time, well, I don't know how it happened. And it's grown into this incredibly large, um, incredibly well-organized, well-run system that anybody in the community that uses GPS can really be proud of. We count on UNAVCO for so much of what we do. So that's kind of been really cool for me to see over the last 30 years. So happy birthday.